This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Facebook, like... They love, everybody loves Facebook uh, uh, Live. It's, uh, the, it's the thing. It's their favorite thing. You have people that can't, cannot stand it. Like, you have people that are saying, like, no, I don't, I never get into Facebook. Like, they, no, I don't. Uh, you the Facebook Live is like the thing. Everybody's in love with this thing. Yeah. All right. We're, we're in it to win it. Yeah. Baruch <laughs> Hashem. <laughs> So we're uh, presenting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Quick intro. Again. Help it. Everyone, welcome to our second class of Forward Rob Draw. Thank you, Rob Draw, for coming and joining us again. Yeah. Thank you to Cynthia Gomez for donating the apartment use for yeah. four weeks in a row. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, also, I just want to let you know in two and a half weeks, while February 25th, Rob Draw is part of a program we're doing with Aish. We're doing another four weeks. Rob Draw will be there one week, but on Monday, it's going to be Monday nights. The 25th, we're doing a showing of Stephen Bram's movie, Kabbalah Me. He's going to be there. He's the producer. Um, the people from Asia are going to be there. It's at the um, Triad Theater. Theater, I said that weird. Um, on the Upper West Side. So if you look at the Kabbalah Experience page, you'll see um, how to get tickets for that. We're charging $20 a head. It's a beautiful theater. It's a, really, it's a Broadway theater. It's amazing. Um, and Rob Draw, I think, is speaking, um, what is it, March 4th or the 11th? one of those two dates but mm -hmm. everything's on the page we'd love everyone to join us at that it's going to be a really cool fun crowd um and again for this rob draw does everything by um donation base so if you feel the the urge we'd love for you to have donate some money to rob draw to support his cause and to come back and do this for us it's wonderful um and without further ado rob draw. thank you so much My strongest will and desire is to, to be able to, to, to share, to pass in a perfect way things that I received and got from the Creator. Because for me, it's a very simple thing and obvious that all the things that I enjoy from and received from Him does not belong to me. It's His kindness and it's grace um, that that been given to me. So for which cause, for what reason, if not to let everyone have that merit, that option, that ability, that opportunity to, to enjoy what that, uh, that belongs to, to their father, to, to our Creator. It's not mine, it's not ours because we heard of it. You heard that, okay, you heard that there is a city named Jerusalem. Does it make it yours? No, it's over there. It's like there's no connection. If you've been aware to something, you heard of some wonderful thing, so okay, it's great, but it doesn't make it yours. Now, I feel very... like I know it for sure. I feel very strong in, in, in my... In my inside in my guts that I must explain it to details even things that I already explained few times before I think it's important to let you try to understand how really things works in our world and I think that it can help you a lot to go deeper in your understanding about the Creator like we said in the first um, class from this wonderful series of classes that Kabbalah is the back end it's the program behind the scene of what we see in the physical world Kabbalah is the links is the connections is the ties is the wisdom means the intention of the Creator in building and creating and and revealing the worlds to us as they see and 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 feel with our senses with our eyes with our ears with our 
ability to touch. Now there is a divine purpose for all of that and for those ones that are seeking the secret, that are willing to find the truth, what that actually they're asking is to find the reason for all things that happens in life. All cause, all, all results, all things that are taking place in reality are coming for us for a reason. Those truth seekers are seeking for the reason. They want to know the answer. They want to know the answer for all their questions. They're asking for it and demanding it. So I'll try to explain to you something that I'm sure that can be very useful for you. And those things that I'm telling you are things that I saw with my eyes, with the eyes of my mind. But those are things that are sitting stuck in, in, in the center of my heart. Like it's so important, it's so great, it's so inspiring, it's so simple and so basic also. And for that it's needed for every believer to have those basics of understandings of what in the world is going on here. Like what's going on? There is a Creator and we heard about Him that He is eternal. And we heard that before of creation He was infinity itself. He was all over. He was endless. Everything was endless. There was no place at all. It was only Him. There was complete unity, complete illumination, only light, endless light, with no beginning, with no end, with no points, with no figures, with no forms. It was all simple and perfectly one. Endless one. And then the Creator wanted to reveal His goodness, His mercy, but there was no one to share it with. And then He came. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for coming. And the Creator wanted to reveal His kindness. He wanted to reveal His mercy. And the only way to do that was to create someone to receive. Because you cannot give to someone when there is no one there. You can sit with your millions, you can sit there with your wisdom and <laughs> you're, you're completely poor when you're not able to share it with someone. We cannot, when you cannot give it to someone else to enjoy from it. And the Creator looked deep into His wisdom and came to that realization, to that understanding that it's time to create the worlds and what He did. He moved himself to the sides. He found a central point in infinity, something that does not exist. We must understand there is no central point to infinity because there is no center. But he found that point of center in the endless sea of souls inside the light. And he removed himself to the sides and created an empty round space, empty from its own godliness. Moved himself to the sides for that purpose of creation. When you want to create something, first of all, you need to move yourself to the sides. That's the first step. And after you move yourself to the sides, that's what the Creator did. He created inside that space, inside that empty space, a beginning of the world to come together. And from the central point of that empty round space, he started to build the worlds. How he did it? He sent a beam of light from the outside of that emptiness means from the ancient days, from the place of before creation, of before time, of before everything, from eternity itself, 
from that light that we spoke about a beam of that light into the central point of darkness of emptiness that was so called empty from its godliness and then started to reveal the worlds and this is the kingship of earth those are the worlds that we know it starts with this globe which is core and the sea the the the, the, the land the trees the animals the birds human beings and then above that the clouds the sky also the 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 space all the the rest of the stars and everything we can see with our eyes and more than that that we cannot understand that exists all of that is tiny all of that even though that in our eyes from our point of view looks so huge and gigantic even just one state is is you can't understand the the, the size of it one city you can't understand how much it contains even if you will take one flower, one leaf, you will try to investigate into the, the secrets and how much intelligence and wisdom it contains, how many details, how complex it is. There is no end to it. Why there is no end to, to, to a grain, grain of, of sand? Why there is no end to every particle? Because the kingship of earth is reflecting the kingship of heaven. What did the Creator made while sending that beam of light into the center of the darkness was to present Himself to us, back again. He wanted to give His own good, His goodness to someone. Therefore, He had to create someone. That's a person, that's a human being, those are Adam and Eve, the souls. And then to them, he revealed his goodness by creating the worlds. Now the worlds are blocking the light of he heaven, but in which way? In a way that we will be able to understand it. If again he would wash the emptiness with his light, we would disappear in infinity we would also go into that light and losing all the deep understanding of who he really is. But now when he is measuring his light in certain amounts, putting it into vessels that will be brown, that will be blue, that will be red, that's going to have that spicy smell and that's going to smell so sweet. And those words in different languages and faces and opinion and all particles of creation all creations, every cell of them is representing, is showing, is reflecting a godly aspect of the Creator Himself. And we, by just seeing all of it and understanding it with all of its w wisdom and movement and changes, and, and supervision on certain issues and depths of certain situations, feelings and emotions with all our experience, as much as we gonna experience more, we gonna receive the knowledge of who our Father in Heaven really is. It means how lucky we are to be one with Him. Because ideally, we were one with Him. There was no differences. There, was no, there were no uh, dividings between us. There was no separation. But when He wanted to reveal to someone His love, His kindness, His friendship, so He had to, to separate Himself, part of Himself, because there was nothing there except of Him. He had to cut himself and to send himself behind the curtains. How he did that? What are those curtains? It's the world itself. And then he sent himself into the world. The world is the, is the blocking. The world is the curtains, are the curtains that are blocking his light. And like that you have a soul inside of yourself, in your mind, inside your body, and you are experiencing things from within, that's Him, the Creator Himself, that is experiencing 
those curtains means the light in portions, in amounts, in measures, until receiving and coming to a completion of that understanding. And how, how that completion is happening when all the souls, when all the people that together as one, we are the one soul of Adam and Eve, are completing our tikkun, fixing everything, means experiencing everything, means realizing, coming to the right understandings of 100% of the aspects of the creation. Means getting the big picture, the complete one, perfectly. Now, Adam and Eve, they came down to the world in heaven. I want to tell you something. Now you're asking, I don't I'm asking. I started my speech by saying that I saw those things, that I understand those things. The Creator has the ability to show you in one moment things that another person cannot experience in 1000 years if he's willing to. When He opens your heart, when He opens your eyes, He can wash you with waves, tons of information, of knowledge that can be so ancient and so pure and contain so much that you don't even need, like, you, people should sit and learn and open books and read and memorize and then they forgot. They need to go all over it back again and to rethink about it and to, and to, and to cry. And another person, the Creator, will just give him that knowledge, that understanding, will, will, will update his program <laughs> with that knowledge. So, in a way, when I saw all those things, I saw much more than I'm able even to share with you and tell you. But, thank God, we have four, four, four lectures, right? We have another th two and a half to go. <laughs> two and two quarters, okay. Two thirds to go, okay. So now the Creator is so kind. And He sent Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve are like amazing people. They are like real, normal, nice people. Good people. They are us. They are not our enemies. Oh, they sinned. Oh, she messed up. Oh, he violated. Oh, he snitched. Oh, he, she told. She spoke with a snake. Oh. No, no, no. It's you. It's me. It's us. They are us. You won't avoid your responsibility. You are a branch from that tree. You are their child and a child is the leg of his father. You are them, just, that your vehicle, your body, is not a vehicle that can contain the greatness and the size of their gigantic souls. And therefore they had to cut themselves into different bodies. So in the first generation there were two people, and in the second generation already 1,000. And then it jumped to 100,000 because the vehicles, the bodies, the vessels were not able to hold all the wisdom of Adam and Eve. If you now would know what Adam knew, you will melt into space, you will disappear, you will vanish, you, you will gone, you won't be here anymore. Why? Because your flesh, your vessel won't be able to get it. You're going to disappear. Because of the wisdom, it will take away the, the, the purpose of, the, of this creation. The creation wants you to progress and to learn one step after the next, that you will grow, that you will develop. That's the purpose of Hashem, of se for sending us to this world, that we will grow slowly but surely, going to climb, going to understand, going to get deeper and deeper. Now, I explained it once, for an example. I spoke about Zipporah, the wife of Moses, for an example. It's not important which, every one of those ancestors, of those righteous ones that the Torah that chose, the Bible chose to reveal to us as an example for us to give us a certain message, certain understanding. So for an example, Tzipora, when she was about to move on from this world in the last day of her life, she had to 
even like in reality that's what happened all of her being all of who that she was was about to go to the next stage mean to move to the next generation of women that will be from the root of her soul from the soul of Tzipora when Sarah our mother she was about to move to the next world so she was about to give her soul to those ones that will continue a portion of the soul that been fixed by Sarah that been fixed by Tzipora that been fixed by Abraham by Jacob by Isaac by every one of them went back to its source back to heaven and it's resting in peace over there waiting for the last day to come for Achrit Ayamim, for the end of days waiting but the portions that have not been fixed yet they need to go to the next stage, to the next level, to the next round. But how can they do it? They must go into smaller vessels. And those vessels means they need to go to vessels. But the vessels are not about to be enough. So smaller portions are going to be divided from that gigantic soul for, of, let's say, Sarah or Tsipora, and will hold the vessels, those new souls will hold a portion of that great soul. Now, how will you divide it? You must divide it in a way that it, you, you, for a person to have a portion of such a gigantic person, so let's say now there is a very wealthy person that after 120 years he passed away and he has f five children and he needs to give them all. You cannot give it really in an equal way unless you're going to sell it, everything, and going to make money from it and going to give them everyone one million dollar equal or 100 million dollars so, and then it will be equal but as long as you don't want to defect the inherit the the properties so you're going to have to divide it in a way that won't be perfectly equal one will get the house one will get the 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 farm one will get the the factory the business one will get the cars and one will get the collections Everyone will take something else, the art. Everyone will take something else. Somehow you're going to divide it into five. So those souls of those great people had to divide in a way that everyone that will, that is about to receive a portion, will receive a different portion. So if Tsipora was, in one aspect, she was modest, so one of the women or 1,000 women will receive the modesty of Tsipora. But if Tsipora was also a mother and she cared about her children, so there are going to be a line of 1,000 women that are about to become the mother Tsipora. And one, if she still had rage or anger or frustration, there are going to be one thousand secret agents or you don't know what they can be or might be that they will carry the anger and the frustration and the rage of Tsipora. It's very dangerous to deal with those women. You don't want to see them, you don't want to know them and for sure you don't want them to be on your back. You don't know what it means to be the anger that Tsipora was fighting with and was dealing with in her life because she was so great and the evil inclination is rising in an equal measure and level compared to the good side for the positive inclination of the person to his soul. If you are so great, it means that you have the power to beat up a very large Yetzerara, evil inclination. So the Yetzerara of Tzipora, of Sarah, of Abraham, of Isaac, Jacob, it's very scary. You don't want that in your backyard. So those are those people that are gigantic and they've been spread in the generations, in the earlier generations. Now, it's 
it's an eye-opening why because if you try to look at the history of the world on, on, on armies of nations that fought and battled and conquered states and, 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 and countries and slaughtered and murdered and killed and raped and abused millions of people and it happened in China and in Japan and it happened in Europe and it happened here in, in the United States and it happened in Israel, it happened in, in, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, in Jordan it happened all over the place and so in such different ways and like what is all this crazy energy reveals to us so it's revealing to us in small portions what that was going on in the minds of the ancestors of those ancient ones of those thick branches first three or first seven or first 26 branches that are the foundation of the nations of the world now it's so important first of all because we are very easily forget who we are we don't have a clue why we're angry and why in the next moment we can love so much and then to be sad and to be disappointed from ourselves for loving and then don't understand ourselves why we were so angry and it all happens in the same moment and we can think ourselves as, as crazy lunatics like what's going on with me I'm so like bipolar so like up and down and for no reason and like everything is good in a crazy day I can understand me for losing my mind but in a good day in a perfect day like no reason to be sad and you are drowning and like why is it happening so first of all we need to remind ourselves that we are part we are a link in that chain we are part of of history we're not the beginning and we're not yet in the end of it it's a process and we're part of that process now after explaining that I want you to take another point of view to this same picture when you born to this world let's take me for an example I was born in Jerusalem and I grew up in a certain neighborhood and we moved to this apartment to that apartment my brothers, siblings, my family, we lived in the same house, I went to a certain school and then moved to another school and my history, I joined the, 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 the army, the, the IDF, I met my wife, we had our children, we moved for certain neighborhoods, different people we met, we had our life experience until now. Now, if you will look at it like a movie, so you can see that this person, that those people, they walked in a certain path. Okay, it's like it's simple history. You're going to write down our history. You're going to explain exactly that address and from that address in that moment, in that time, in that day, they moved, they went, they drove, they ate, they sat. Every, you, can, you, can, you can count every detail of our life experience. You can write it down. You can dissect our life. Now, the thing is that we, as people, we experienced it from inside. What does it mean? We didn't saw the movie. We were not standing outside and saw ourselves walking from one point to the other. We were facing challenges. We were inside the scene. We were experiencing that experience. We felt that we must choose and we were talking what we gonna eat and we should eat this or not eat that what should we do oh and I'm late and I have to go and then we experienced it from within from inside those bodies from inside those people that w that are us now you experienced yours one did it in Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, one did it in the US, one is still doing it in China, one in Japan, everyone in a different place and what we are all actually doing, we are experiencing 
That's what we're doing. We are choosing out of the options that we have. Now, what we explained before about the Creator, that the Creator Himself, He wanted to give, but there was no one to give to, so He had to create a curtain, it's the world itself, and then to send Himself, His own portion, to behind the curtain, to experience it from a different angle, from the darkness itself, means from within. Our, yours, yours, life experience is how the Creator is experiencing now, in the present, the world means His godliness, because the kingship of earth is reflecting the kingship of heaven. We are experiencing Him. He is experiencing Himself through us. You are that lucky vessel to experience the, the, the part that's been given to you to experience. And like we said, the souls that are moving from one generation to the next are getting smaller, weaker. The vessels are smaller, so we are able to experience less with time. Therefore, we cannot see the complete picture. It's hard for us to realize why those things are happening. And everything looks so broken and weird and, and disconnected. Like, why in the world I'm doing this? And why I found myself so angry? And why, why do I need to work in that job? And why, why in the world like I, I bought shoes with, with, how do you call those? Laces. What? Laces. Laces. Why, do, why, why couldn't find something just to put my foot into it now? All those struggles are making your life experience rich. They're giving to your soul experiences that are important for your completion from a godly point of view. From the perspective of the Creator, that He knows exactly what you need to go through to experience, you are completing your mission and by that, helping to complete the complete mission of the wide world, of all the souls that are here, right now, in the present, experiencing life. Now, another point of view on that grand picture. Is it interesting? Should I continue? Okay. You experience your 120 years. You started somewhere and you're moving. Okay, you're traveling. But it looks like that only from your eyes. The truth is that your soul is an eternal soul is an ancient soul. Your soul didn't just show up 20 years ago or 50 years ago or 60 years ago in this world. Your soul started its journey first of all before of time. But in this world, in the first soul of Adam and Eve, that's where you started. Now we will try to look at your soul how it started its journey in the early beginning in heaven, when the Creator decided to create heaven and earth, and then the grass, the water, the light, the sun, the moon, whatever happened, animals, birds, the large fish in the sea, and all the creations are standing, showing in a great way the godliness, the wisdom of creation, fruits are sweet on the trees, everything, the garden, four rivers are spreading and, and showing the gold and the, and the, and the wealth and, and, the, and the bounty, and everything is open wide and colorful and smells so good, and then two souls came connected as one down to the world, the soul of Adam and Eve. You were there. You were inside that spiritual body of Adam and Eve. 
probably men on the, on the male side, probably women on the feminine side, even though that we know that in our generation we can see also the opposite, because that in the secret that is so complex, the souls might even replace roles, replace jobs, genders. Suddenly a man can become in the body of a woman. And it happens, it happens, and you know where, where the first time we saw it, that it happened? On Isaac, on Yitzchak. It's written on Isaac that Yitzchak Avinu, our father, he had a feminine soul. It's written on him that he had a feminine soul and therefore he was not able to bring children down to the world. And only after that they were praying, and his prayer being accepted, you will ask why his prayer should be accepted. It's written that he was a righteous man, a son of a righteous man, for sure that he was not supposed even to pray. Why was he praying? He was praying because in the secret of his creation, he was a f the soul was a feminine soul. Inside of Isaac, that huge man, the father of Jacob and Esav, you know who he was? He was a feminine soul. Inside of him there was a very delicate and gentle female soul inside of him. Therefore he had to pray to break that nature. Because when there are two feminine souls, like his soul and the soul of Rivka, his wife, getting married, they're not able to bring children to the world. Two women cannot bring children to the world. Not only two physical women bodies are not able to bring children to the world. Because that the physical bodies are reflecting the soul that lives inside of it, therefore they're not able to bring a child. A child is not a vehicle, a child is not a body. A child is a soul inside of a body. So because that they were two feminine soul, this, his soul and his wife's soul, therefore they were not, were not, was not able, were not able to bring down a child to the world. So he had to pray to break his nature. And the, 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 the creation is very complex. Now we'll go back to that explanation. The soul that now inside of you experiencing your life is an ancient soul that started its process down on earth in the first day when you came down to creation as Adam and Eve, inside of Adam and Eve's soul. And then, like we explained before, the soul of Adam and Eve had to go to the next generation if it was when they gave birth to their children and portion of their souls passed through their sperm and egg to the children to the next generation and they received a portion and part of it after they passed away in reincarnation the souls came down back to a different lifetime attached to the roots of souls. It's a very complex thing. It's a very deep thing. But still, you can look at yourself now as a dolphin that swims in the sea, that you are jumping in and out from this world in different lifetimes. And you're just like skipping on that generation because it's not part of your mission. And then 70 years later, you're coming in a different body, a different family, to experience in a different language, in a different language, different nation, different religion, different life experience, but an experience that will answer to the qualities and the ability of your unique soul to experience things for the mission of the Creator that sent you to be His messenger on earth. Now, when we are experiencing life, we are experiencing life in the present. Also, when we experience things in the past, we experience those things in the present. We were there living the moment. We lived that moment when we were there. You were five. When you were five, you were five. Exactly like that now you're 35. 
then you were five. You experienced the Creator and His worlds and everything that was in front of your eyes and going on inside of your body, means your emotions and your feelings and your senses, all those things, you experienced them also in the past, in the present, also in the future, that will take place tomorrow or in one year from now, we will experience it in the present. There is no real future and there is no real past. The past is our memory from an earlier, let's call it earlier experience, a different experience that we experienced in a place that we're calling it the past. But really, the real existence is only of the now, only of the present. It's the only reality exists, and that's the name of God. His name is Havaya Baruchu. Havaya means the present. He is the existence of the of of above time. So when you experience a moment, you are experiencing it with the Creator, because He is the one that is experiencing it through you, like we explained before. I think it's the fourth time already. Now, when you're experiencing it, you're experiencing it eternally, because you are in the now, and the now does not have time limits. It's now and, for, and, and on. It's always there. Like that we believe that the tears and the sorrow and the pain that different generations suffered and experienced and their scream and their cry is still hanged in heaven until the last day of revenge. The great actions of other people from different end generations is still hanged until day of reward until the salvation will come, until we will all go up above time and gonna experience the wide, the complete picture of all those scenes that took place in the present, in the now. Now, what am I trying to say? I'll explain to you again. When we experienced our life in every moment in the past, that moment didn't pass away. It didn't disappear. It stayed in its own form in that time zone. But we are that dolphin that is on the run, that is on the move, and we as people, as creations, we are under the limitation of time. The Creator is not under that limitation of time. The Creator is looking on this world from the eternal world, that over there there is enough space to hold all the information and all the feelings and all the emotions and all the knowledge and all the situations for good. There is no end to the storage place over there in infinity, in the world to come, right? But we been sent to this world to experience. So we are, in a way, a time travelers. We are time travelers because we are the only ones that are traveling in time, means experiencing time. Time does not exist except of in our mindset. Because our vehicles been programmed to experience a certain experience under certain limitations. So we are been we've been designed, we been made to experience the completion, the infinity under the limitation of time. So we are time travelers means that we are passing through time. Not because it's reality, only because that this is the way that the Creator decided to experience Himself in the worlds. So we are experiencing things in that tunnel, 
of time, but we are that ancient soul. So your movie that you're experiencing is not only those 120 years of this lifetime, we are talking about a 6,000 years experience. But not only your experience exists, also all the rest of our friends' experiences exist in the same time means that the soul of Adam and Eve as a beam of light, as a pure soul, came down to the world and it's spreading and spreading and spreading. It's moving, it's changing bodies, it's moving houses, it's buying products in the grocery stores, it's going to swim in the lake, it's fishing fish from the sea. It's going and drinking and eating. It's recruiting people to the army. It's fighting with different nations. It's killing and destroying each other. It's humiliating and abusing and raping and murdering and stabbing their own best friends. It's a whole large picture of 6,000 years of different channels that are spreading and spreading and spreading and covering the world and are about to come to their completion. That's Redemption Day. And what will happen in that day? What that will happen in that day is that all of our minds will understand my, now, simple explanation that I just gave you. When all people around the world will have that merit to rise above their individual life experience, going out of their, their selfishness to understand that there is a supervisor, that there is a God, and that their life does not necessarily mean because that they are experiencing it, that this is the most important thing in the world. When you're hungry, you must eat. When you don't have a house, you must buy one or rent one or get into one because you have to. That's how you experience life. But when in that moment that all the souls will understand that they are part of something much larger than their life experience, in that moment we will all gonna rise above time. And you know what will happen in that moment? I can tell you. I've been there, I saw it. I'll tell you. We will all, our minds, will all just gonna rise out from our bodies like the people that died and came back to life like clinical death and all those stories are telling I found myself out of my body and I saw myself lying on the street or on the bed or whatever and it was an outside of the body experience and the soul is rising rising but not really separated from who he is just separated from its attachment to physicality but experiencing thing in much wider way with strongest and wider vessels to contain knowledge to feel, to experience, because that when a person's soul leaves his body, so it leaves the prison of limitations. It leaves all the constrictions, all the darkness, and he can experience things from outside, and not from that tunnel of time travelers that are limited to the experience that has been measured for them to experience. Now, all the souls in one moment will distract their thoughts from reality, so-called, what we experience as reality, and will let their mind fly a little bit. They will grow spiritually and they will see things from a different angle. In one moment it will take place for the wide world souls. Everyone as one will wake up suddenly gonna see things from a different angle and all gonna rise to a certain level like water that are covering the sea and suddenly we're gonna see the sea 
we're going to see the sea of souls. Suddenly gonna, we're going to meet each other in a different level, in a spiritual level. We're not going to shake hands. We're not going to hug each We're not going to meet each other physically. We're going to meet each other spiritually with no differences, with no dividings, with complete love, with no inner thoughts that are contradicting each other, with no separation. We're just going to unite in love in one moment. And then in that moment, we will all still, even though we have been took out of our bodies, our eyesight, our focus will still be sent down to the world. Like those descriptions of all those people that experienced where, while they were rising, they were still looking down. Why? Because a person is afraid to lose what that is familiar to him. He knew himself as a body. He knew himself as a person. So when he's getting away from that person, from that vehicle, he still put his eyes on him to see what's going on. And now if he can't see the body anymore, he will look at the house, at the yard, at the neighborhood, at the city. Oh yeah, that's my city. That I know that place. Like He will relate himself because he is still not completely out of the picture. But in that moment that we all as one will realize that we are all still okay and nothing happened and that something bigger is taking place around us, we're going to start experiencing the world from a different angle. Suddenly we're going to see that all of this world is a picture is a creation because like we said before every moment from the real point of view of the creator is not limited by time it didn't pass it didn't disappeared it's standing over there forever and suddenly you're going to see that everything is still taking place in its form forever and you're going to see such large picture that will complete such deep understanding in our minds of who we are and what we were doing and part of which huge, gigantic system we were part of that we're going to climb above our level of awareness and we will become one with all the souls. And suddenly you're going to see that under your place that is above place, you all, all of us together, gonna see the sea, eternal silver sea, like a mirror. Everyone came out of that mirror and saw it under himself. That's how it will be seen to us. We will rise slowly, slowly, climbing, flying, rising above our bodies to that place of awareness and then suddenly you're going to see a whole flat mirror reflection of eternity, of what that is above you, the thing that you haven't seen yet, because your mindset was still looking down on earth, on what that is familiar and known to you as reality. And then you're going to see that all this world is a mirror, is only the reflection of kingship of heaven, and that you were just experiencing godliness and that the real godliness is over there and we will all lift our eyes up to heaven and gonna see his kingship gonna see him and his mighty glory in his greatness in his complete beauty and illumination that will heal us and all of our existence and we're talking about all the souls as one and the souls like we said not only the last 70 years that you experienced that dolphin that is swimming here for 6,000 years all the souls will rise from all the bodies at once 
and will all experience infinity in that moment. And when we will rise our eyes and gonna see heaven and gonna understand it, you know what will happen? We will come back to our bodies again, but to a healed world, to a healed body. And the supervision will be the opposite of the supervision of today. Everything will be good. There will be no more mixture of good and bad. No more illnesses, no more plagues, no more darkness, no more lies. Because people will be aware to the existence of the good. They will recognize themselves already as good souls. They won't have no enemies anymore. The souls that will refuse to accept the godly kingship of heaven, in that time that we all gonna rise to the heights, they will melt into the ground and disappear. When we will come back from that divine journey back to earth, we not gonna see them anymore. They won't be there. The revenge of the Creator in His enemies will take place without you. You don't need to worry about revenge. When you will come back to this world after that moment that you just been distracted, saw something else, when you will come back to this world, what that you will see is the world of after redemption, the redeemed world. And you know how it will be that in the morning of redemption, you're going to wake up and open your eyes and your room will be the best, finest room in the world. The curtains will be so beautiful. The sun will shine. Birds will sing. Everything will be exactly like you like. If there's a carpet that fits for you, that will be the carpet under your feet. And the best shoes in the world, you like brown shoes, black shoes, red shoes, green shoes, yellow shoes, you'll have them. And you will put your feet into those perfect shoes and the best pants in the world or the long dress, the royal dress. Whatever you desire, you will have in front of your eyes the best food, only your beloved ones. And they will be so happy to see you and you will be so glad to see them. And everything will be perfect, perfect. This is the world of redemption. You will go out to the world and the world will smile to us all as one because the Creator will reveal the one last thousand of years of redemption to the world. And that's the cap, that's the final, that's the end, that's the completion of the creation. The creation built from 6,000 years of labor, of effort, of completing and fixing the things that were obligated as soldiers, as troopers, as messengers of the Creator to experience life in a certain way that been chosen and given to us from heaven. But to complete those 6,000 years and to pass to the next stage, Shabbos, Shabbat, the last 1,000 years of eternity, of beauty, of pleasure, of joy, of satisfaction, of enjoying every moment and moment and experiencing perfection that is above our power of imagination. And the things that the Creator will reveal to us will be in every detail and details. You will see when you'll go out to the streets, the tiles of the houses in front of you will shine to you in the colors that you like. And in the next day when you're going to cross the street, you will find the next tiles that you want to see. It will change based on your desire, on what that will make you happy. If you want to experience and meet people, those people will come right at you and it will be perfect from their side as well. Because this world is reflecting the completion of heaven. It fits for heaven to show perfection because heaven is perfect. But we are still not able to hold it, 
to contain it, to understand it. We had to separate ourselves into smaller, tinier vessels, bodies, vehicles. And we are now divided in our journeys, cannot understand, cannot experience, cannot complete our, our knowledge, cannot go all the way with our faith, cannot count, can't find the light, losing our way, losing the path, misunderstood, confused, lost, scared, afraid. All those separations are taking place in our lives because they're needed to humble us to bring us to that point that we will be worthy vessels means pure enough, clean enough, went through the complete journey that had been set for them by the Creator that wanted to reveal His mercy and His kindness in complete way, in a complete way. When we will complete our path, our way, we will get to that place that He will reveal to us the real kingship of heaven, be, not behind the screens, not behind the curtains anymore. Still for 1,000 years in, phys in physical world, we're covered with physical body, but in a fixed one, in a healthy one, in a positive one, in one that doesn't know pain, doesn't know sorrow, doesn't experience grief and, and, and loss in no way. Only rising and growing. Now, the man that will have the ability to teach that, that wisdom to people, that couple, they are the soul of Adam and Eve. This is the soul of Adam and Eve that is leading that mission for 6,000 years already. And like we said, they've been sent from first generation to the next, and from second to the third, and fourth, and fifth, and they're just crossing like the, 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 the how you call the, the, the top of, of, of the spear, the, 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 of the, the knife, the, the point. what? Point, Point tip. yes. Tip. The tip of that spear. They're the commander in front of the camp. They are those ones that are opening the path for the generation to walk after them. So the souls of Adam and Eve are still with us. They're dressed in different bodies. And they will be those ones that will have the merit to open the eyes of the rest of the souls to understand who they are. That they are one with Adam and Eve. That they are Adam and Eve. You can be the shoulder, you might be the knee, you can be the, the emotions, you can be the anger, the rage, the love, the, the greatness. It's not important. You are part of something much greater than you. We are part of something much greater. And Mashiach, Tzidkenu, the one that we believe in him, he will be that one to open our eyes to see that complete picture. To recognize who we really are and what the mission really is all about. And He will wake us all up to recognize the light. And He is already doing it right now. When we are waking up right now, we are waking up because of that spirit of Mashiach that is hovering above the water. Ruach Elohim merachefet al amayim. The spirit of God is hovering above the water, is watering the herds is watering those thirsty ones, those ones that are asking for the truth. The ones that are asking for the truth will surely get it, will surely be answered, because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. That desire to find the truth, that inner urge to know the answer, is showing to you who you really are, that you are carved, from under the throne of honor, that you are one of those souls of the righteous ones, that even though the curtains are thick and the darkness is, is horrible, you are still desiring the good and the light with all your heart. And you're trying again and again. We should be very cheerful, very proud of ourselves to be who we are in this dark generation, in that late time after so many thousands of years and so many distractions and wars and pain and, 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 
and darkness still desiring the good still willing to find the answer not giving up on the truth not forgetting who we really are from within that the creator sent us to be who we are in a vehicle dressed with his honor okay was that enough kabbalah for you for tonight <laughs> thank you thank you Rav we hope you enjoy this video very much please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world for more please visit amuna.com may your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.